Hello friends, we were talking about the hypertension and in today's lecture we will talk about the role of baroreceptors in the regulation of blood pressure. So before uh, talking about the role uh, and how it help in um, regulation of blood pressure, first of all, uh, let's talk, talk about what are baroreceptors basically. Baroreceptors are just nerve ending. They are just nerve ending of cranial nerve 9, cranial nerve 10 that are present on the different part of the blood, uh, blood vessels. Uh, and they are responsible for sensing the blood pressure. They will send the blood pressure and send message to the brain for the regulation. Okay. For example, here you can see these are the atrium, these are the ventricle, and this is the basically aortic arch. And similarly, these are the uh, external carotid arteries. These are the internal carotid arteries. And in the in internal carotid artery, here you can see carotid sinus. Carotid sinus. So on the carotid sinus wall and on the aortic arch wall on the aortic arch and on the carotid sinus uh, nerve fibers are uh, nerve endings are present in the carotid sinus these nerve endings are basically nerve ending of cranial nerve 9 and these nerve endings uh, these baroreceptor these are nerve ending of cranial nerve 10 and these nerve endings are called as baroreceptors these nerve endings are called as baroreceptors. Nerve ending of cranial nerve 9 that is present on the carotid sinus and nerve ending of cranial nerve 10 that are present in the aortic arch. They are called as baroreceptor. And these cr uh, cranial nerves, these both of these cranial nerves are afferent. Afferent nerve fibers. Afferent nerve fibers mean they will take this message towards the central nervous system. And efferent nerve fibers are basically who will take message from central nervous system to the affected organ. So these are the efferent uh, nerve fibers. So it means they are responsible for taking the message from organ to the central nervous system, from sensory organ to the central nervous system. So they will take message toward the toward the medulla of spinal cord. Medulla of spinal cord. So this cranial nerve 10 and cranial nerve 9 will take message to the medulla of spinal cord. And the message will be in the form of uh, number of impulses, number of action potential, frequency of action potential. Okay. For example, if they are, they are continuously sending uh, the impulses toward the cardiovascular region in the medulla. Okay. And if the blood pressure goes up, it means the stretch on these receptors will increase. The stretch, the pressure on these nerve ending will increase. If the pressure on these nerve ending will increase, the frequency of action potential, the frequency of uh, nerve uh, impulses will increase. And if the frequency will be increased, so uh, this uh, region will get to know that blood pressure has been increased and now we have to do something to uh, regulate it. Similarly, if the blood pressure decreases, the uh, stretch, the pressure on these nerve ending will decrease and the frequency and the number of action potential and frequency of uh, action potential decreases. And if the frequency of action potential decreases, it means now medulla will get to know that blood pressure is getting down and I have to activate sympathetic nervous system. Okay. In the medulla, both uh, the uh, cell bodies of sympathetic nervous system and parasympathetic uh, system they are present and depending upon the body need this uh, is responsible for the activating either sympathetic nervous system or parasympathetic nervous system okay so for example assume that in our case the frequency of action potential the frequency of nerve fibers have been decreased nerve fibers have been decreased uh, nerve impulses have been decreased if the frequency of nerve impulses have been decreased it means the blood pressure is uh, blood pressure has decreased the blood pressure is decreasing so what will happen this cardiovascular region in the medulla it will activate sympathetic nervous system it will activate sympathetic nervous system so and we know that sympathetic nerve fibers sympathetic nerve fibers are supplied to SA node and AV node, SA node and AV node on the heart, sympathetic nerve fiber 
are also supplied to the cardiac muscle. Sympathetic nerve fibers are also supplied to the smooth muscles or blood vessels. And in the smooth muscle, alpha 1 receptors for sympathetic nervous system will be present. In the uh, heart, beta 1 receptors will be present. Similarly, on the cardiac muscle again, beta 1 receptor will be present for the uh, for the neurotransmitter of sympathetic nervous system. Neurotransmitter of sympathetic nervous system that is uh, epinephrine or epinephrine. So what will happen? When the neurotransmitter released from these sympathetic nerve fiber will act on these pacemaker cells of the heart, it will result in increase of heart rate. Actually, we are, uh, actually our sympathetic system is trying to compensate the decreased blood pressure that was sensed by these baroreceptor and send message to the medulla. And in response to these uh, decreased blood pressure, medulla activated the sympathetic nervous system. And now sympathetic nervous system is trying to increase the blood pressure. It is trying to compensate the blood pressure. Okay, so the first thing what is it is going to do, it will activate the sympathetic nervous system and these sympathetic nerve fibers, uh, when the neurotransmitter will act on these pacemaker cells, you know that uh, when uh, it will act on their pacemaker cell, obviously these pacemaker cell will be having beta 1 receptor and when the epinephrine and norepinephrine will go and it will act on these pacemaker cell, it will result in the increase in heart rate. It will result in increase in heart rate. Similarly, uh, when these epinephrine and norepinephrine released from these sympathetic nerve fiber will act on the beta 1 receptor of cardiac muscles, it will increase the force of contraction. And the, when the force of contraction will increase, you know that stroke volume will increase. Stroke volume means the amount of blood being injected per contraction. It will increase. Stroke volume will increase. And we know that heart rate, if heart rate increase, cardiac output will increase, blood pressure will increase. If stroke volume increase, cardiac output will increase, blood pressure will increase. Similarly, uh, if the epinephrine and norepinephrine released from these sympathetic nerve fiber act on the alpha 1 receptor that is present on the smooth muscles of blood vessel, it will cause the vasoconstriction. And when the blood vessel will constrict, now blood has to face more resistance while moving through the blood vessels. It has to face more resistance. It means total peripheral resistance will increase. When the blood vessel constrict, total peripheral resistance will increase. And we know that total peripheral resistance has direct relation with the blood pressure. Direct relation means if one thing increases, second thing also increases. So if the TPR increases, blood pressure will also increase. And in this way, the lower, the decreased blood pressure will be compensated. Okay. Uh, the detail of uh, stroke volume, heart rate, cardiac output and diastolic volume and systolic volume has also been explained in the previous videos. Uh, you can uh, visit those lectures as well. Uh, I hope you must like the lecture uh, that how baroreceptors bar are basically responsible for uh, regulation of blood pressure in our body. Uh, please don't forget to uh, subscribe my channel and press the bell icon so that you may get notification for the future videos. And uh, furthermore, please uh, like and uh, share this video as well. Thank you so much.